All right, we are preparing the live stream. Glad my desk clean. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for modern technology. And we're live. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to episode two of Love and Marriage. We have three wonderful couples here with us, and we are going to allow our guest couple to give. Sorry a longer introduction because they're new here and then everybody else will go around and give their introduction so what your introduction is a little short today it's been a short change so. oh. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Just, i don't know what i'm supposed to say my husband is telling me that i should have given you all a little bit more so this is our second episode of love and marriage i am so excited that you all are in this space with us go ahead and hit that share button so that we can oh that's what i was supposed to say so that we can get this out to the masses um you all are in for a great time we have some great couples here i'm not going to keep on talking i'm going to allow the austin to start Hello, everybody. Hello, uh, Facebook uh, audience. Uh, my name is Pastor Austin, and this is my wife, Evangelist Austin. We're so glad to be um, the guests on tonight. Um, we are from Detroit, Michigan, and so we're just glad to be here. Yes. Um, as he said, I am Evangelist Austin, and uh, we love to have fun together. So we're interested in being on the panel tonight to uh, have some dialogue with some fellow married couples. All right. Next, we are going to go with um, Bernard and Shayla Hall. They're going to give a brief introduction. Okay. Oh. <laughs> no, why do you can't look like that? Oh, can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> the, he went first, you go first. <laughs> if, if you all don't, if you all didn't realize last week there'll be a bunch of this back and forth and it's all out of love i'm, yeah. try, I'm you know trying what? to keep it in order no, 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 no. it is really hot no you know we we got to break the cycle sometime anyway hey i'm bernard hall uh some of y'all know me as that guy b um but uh I'm glad to be back, you know, be back again with this panel. You know, we had such a good time last time and I'm just looking forward to uh, some great things, sharing information and receiving as well. Uh, it's just been a wonderful, uh, wonderful experience and glad to be back. Honey, now guess what? It's your turn. You say what? No. <laughs> <laughs> I am Shayla. I am Bernard's wife and I'm also known as that girl Shay. So um, I am happy to be amongst my friends to laugh, talk, and have a good time on tonight. All right. Next, we are going to have Pastor and Evangelist Cynthia Hall. By the way, they are on vacation, and they are here with us, and I am grateful for that. Next, we are going to go. You go first? Yeah. Go ahead. Yes, hello. My name is Pastor Ronnie Hall, and thank God for being here today. We are greeting you from Monroe, North Carolina, uh, by way of Atlanta, Georgia. We are just so thankful to be back with you again on tonight and here with my wife, First Lady Cynthia Hall, and we thank God and so thankful for this invitation and to allow us to come and to share, to learn, and just to be a part of this great panel. Okay. Uh, first lady off. Okay. <clears throat> I am so happy to be back with you guys <clears throat> on tonight. Um, and I think this is a very good thing that we are doing because a lot of people are saying they really truly enjoyed it the first time. And uh, I think, well, we've been married one on 42 years. So lots of experience. So we're willing to help anyone that we can, you know, that's willing to listen. Um, but we just thank God for being back. And we thank God for our brother and sister Davis for even yeah. having us back on again, mm -hmm. you know, because, and it seems like everybody on here has a good attitude. And that's what it's all about, having fun. Mm -hmm. Marriage is all about having fun, laughing with one another mm -hmm. and, you know, making memories, you know, if one is gone, the other one can't remember. You know, well, 
he or she made me do this or he or she made me do that. And it's just all about loving one another, you know, and being on the same page. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm sorry. It'll be 25 years in August. I just twenty eighth, the twenty eighth of August. Yeah. Since they announced, we'll be ten on January twenty sixth next year. All, all right. right, all right. And we are working on twelve. Woo. All right. Yeah. Um, twelve years married. Let's keep talking. My Lord, my Lord. <laughs> Y'all know how long I had to wait on her again. <laughs> We going back into this? We going, we going that again? We going back. We going back. I like those stories. Two, <laughs> wait, seven years. Seven years. We gonna say this. We out here about the chicken, yes, ma'am. I gotta tell people that. <laughs> All right. In the air. Two days in a bag of fish. <laughs> oh, come on, come on. <laughs> the hog, go ahead and tell y'all story. What uh, did it take for you? Which hogs? No, we had a bag of chicken wings. My lord. My lord. All right. So we have told our stories how long it took for our spouses. Did the Austin tell how long it took for no. Tony to, or Pastor Austin to win Trene over? Do you guys remember? There we go. Um, it took about Let's see. Oh, look at that. <laughs> that we saw. It took about a couple of days <laughs> for us to start dating. And then about a month, I believe, before we start really in a Close your mouth, Shayla. Close your mouth. <laughs> but it took only six months for us to get engaged. Wow. All right. Am I the only one? Gonna, and actually, gonna, here's what's most interesting. I fell in love with her without meeting her face to face. Whoa. The majority wow. of our dating, wow. we didn't date um, until like probably a month after we, you know, had that initial conversation and we fell in love right over the phone. I oh, we got to we gotta hear this we story. Gotta hear, yeah. We got to hear the story. <laughs> All right. So here it wrong. is. He's gonna so, give his version first. <laughs> Eddie said he must did something wrong. What you say, Eddie? Because I'm the only one that waited seven baby, years. Baby, Everybody... baby, it's not they gonna kill us. <laughs> I'm trying to figure it's this out. It's their turn. We're gonna let them tell. We can they... help. All right, come on. We're gonna help somebody. So here, here's where it started. It was my sister and uh her uh sister-in-law. We were riding in the car, and my sister had a conversation, said, you know what? You know, you're a preacher. It's about time for you to have a wife. And that was around about the same time I was um, in college. I was graduating with my master's. And I was like, okay, I need. I think I'm ready to get married now. You know, I've, I've done most of the things that I wanted to do. So I started asking the Lord for a, a mate. And so they said, well, we think we found someone for you. I was like, really? They said, yeah, we got a picture of her. And so they only showed me the picture. <laughs> So I looked at the picture. I said, all right, all right. She looked like a missionary for sure. <laughs> I said, she had the long skirt on. I'm like, okay. She, I was at church. Like I was at church. So don't let them fool you. I was at church. <laughs> I said, okay. The picture was good. I gave her back the picture and didn't think anything of it. So I got back, you know, to the house and it was weird. I was cleaning up uh, my uh, college campus apartment. And all of a sudden, that picture reappeared. I'm like, okay, I, I don't know her, you know. So, you know, and then time went by, you know, studying and classes. And then I get a text from my sister's sister-in-law and said, hey, you know, the you remember the young lady I was talking to you about? Would you like her number? I said, sure, because I'm always, you know, at that time, I wanted to meet, you know, other young couples who were saving ministry, uh, maybe a college ministry. So... I asked for a number. And so when she gave it to me, um, and, and here's the thing, the Lord gave her something that night and the Lord gave me something that night. So I said, okay, I don't call young ladies. It was around about nine o'clock. I said, well, I got the number. I'm not going to call tonight because, you know, I don't want to be disrespectful of her time. You know, she, she's a young lady in the Lord. And so that's what my father and my grandfather taught me. 
you don't call young ladies at different times of night. You know, it's different in this generation, but yeah, you know, yeah. certain things you do and you don't do. <laughs> but then the Lord spoke to me in my ear. He said, call her. I'm like, okay. <laughs> said, I, hope I hope this is the Lord I'm here. And so I called her and we had an awesome conversation. The spirit of the Lord even came. And, you know, it was different from this generation the the language in what we were talking was nothing you know secular i wasn't talking about her body or what she had on you know they do that in this generation but you know we start talking about the goodness of the lord and what we do in ministry and the spirit of god came in our in our conversation and then it it just led on from there so she can tell her side <laughs> <laughs> so um Prior to him getting my photo, I met his sister and I had gone to an event and her, his sister was there and she met me and I said, you know, hi, well, she was introduced to me by her sister-in-law. And so we spoke, she complimented me on something I had on. I said, thank you. I went on about my business. Um, and so <laughs> then I would say maybe, um, maybe about March, the end of February, somewhere in the end of February, the beginning of March, um, the sister-in-law gave me a phone call and she said, um, someone wants to talk to you. And I said, okay. So I had gotten off of work. I was at my friend's house. It was a group of us. We were getting together to uh, have fun. We were eating nachos and we had chips and all kinds of stuff. We were having fun. And so uh, I stepped out. And I talked to her and she says, um, she told me who she was and what she wanted and all that aside from him. So then she says, well, um, are you single? I said, yes. She says, um, well, um, my brother, um, would you mind if I gave my brother your number? I said, yes, I would mind. Please don't give your brother my number. <laughs> and so she said, she said to me, but he's saved and he loves the Lord and he's in college and she's giving all these great accolades. And I said, that is so wonderful. Praise be to God. No, you cannot give him my number. And so she went to say something else um, about him. I can't remember what it was, but while she was saying what it, what, whatever she was saying, the Lord spoke to me while I was at my friend's house and he said, give him your number. So I did it. And um, that had to be maybe about 7.30, I would say. And um, so I was looking at my phone because I didn't have his number and I don't really answer foreign numbers. So um, I'm looking and I text her. I said, listen, if he gonna call me, you need to tell him go ahead and call me because we're not gonna be on the phone real late. And I had other obligations also. And so uh, he called me. And, you know, he, he's saved to his bone marrow. He started speaking in tongues on the phone. And, uh, <laughs> I knew it was coming. He I said, he, I remember him yeah. very vividly saying, I don't know if you feel the presence of the Lord, but I feel him. I said, yes, I feel him. <laughs> and so I knew, um, I knew she was going to tell it. So. <laughs> So uh, I, <clears throat> I was with um, my grandparents. I was with my grandparents and my grandfather, he was at the time he was in his early nineties. And he says to me, um, I was on the phone with him or something I had done. And my grandfather said, what's his name? I said, huh? He said, what's his name? We walking around here smiling and singing songs and what's his name? So I told him his name. He said, oh, okay. And he went on about his business. So, um, yeah, that kind of led up to our our dating phase, I guess I would say. That led up to our dating phase. Wow, that's phenomenal. But let me say this. I want to say this. Before I met him, in October of the year, in October, so we met in 2012. So in 2011 of October, uh, the Lord spoke to me and said to write a list of everything I wanted in a mate. And I did that. And um, he told me to place it. 
in my Bible. And I did that. And so in the conversation that he and I had, he did most of the talking and I was listening and I, what I was listening for, I was listening for what was on my list and everything that I placed on my list. The Lord says, see, look, see, listen, listen, wow. hear what I'm saying. listen, listen. That's and so he confirmed everything that was on my list in that conversation. That's awesome. That is amazing. <clears throat> well, they, y'all all killed me. I guess I'm the bad lady on the list. <laughs> <laughs> sound like he got his answer the first night, two nights, and then I think it was two more days. But that's all right. I'm on. <laughs> I'm waiting on it. I don't have anything else to say about that. Thank Listen, you all. I just I remember some of she was talking. I remember when I first got your phone number. Because we started when we started dating, what did we do? Wrote letters. And I think I still got those letters somewhere packed away in a box. And I think the first letter said, Do you want to date me or will you go out with me? Circle yes or no. And we passed letters back and forth through missionary <laughs> Dream to come. For the longest. For a long time, she passed letters back and forth between the two of us. Um, and when I first got her number, I'm like, Lord, is this a sign this, that it should not be? Because I'll never forget the first six digits of her number. 369666. <laughs> <laughs> He said 666. Six, six. I don't remember what that number was. I think it was four. <laughs> Three, six, nine, six, six, six. And I'm like, six, God, six, six, six. you didn't uh, turn around and run another way? <laughs> Those three sixes, and did you throw it away? No, I didn't throw the number away. Absolutely <laughs> <laughs> not. He did not throw the number away. And we probably passed letters for probably When I got married, months. that number had to go whatever past letters for six months then we went to instant messenger it took us forever to actually hold a phone conversation. Hold a conversation but nonetheless we are here and it is almost 19 years later so it was worth awesome. the wait right um, <laughs> but thank you all so much for joining we just gave you our brief introduction so if those that are online has any questions that they would like to ask, um, we will do our best to address them. Um, and we'll come to you in our own way. If there's a specific couple that you want to ask the question to, by all means, keep it respectful. Um, but we will do our best to answer. Everyone on here has agreed to do so. Um, if I don't get any questions here, I'm gonna just go ahead and ask one. And then if I get one after everybody has answered this question that I asked, unless something comes up before the end, then I will we'll finish answering and then we'll ask the question that was put on the floor. Just so you all know, I tried to cheat and get a head start on this because I don't like to be put on front, you know, like last minute not knowing stuff. She wouldn't tell me what was being asked. So if I start looking crazy, it's because I don't know what to answer. <laughs> I told you all this is not scripted. And I literally just found the questions prior to being on. So nobody has had time um, to get the question. All right. Um, how would you describe that you and your spouse resolve conflict? Or describe how you and your spouse resolve conflict? Do you want us to go first? Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Eddie. You first. You don't put ladies first. No, sure. Can you see that? So, we promise transparency on this line. Um, I have a conflict. <laughs> um, so, now I think my answer is in the beginning stages of our marriage, I was very childish. So, I just wouldn't talk to him for like a few hours. But now, um, and then he would be just trying to get the answer out of me and just, or just trying to find out what was wrong and I wouldn't tell him. And I would just be like, you know, don't worry about it. But now I don't want, I wonder, does he miss that? Because now when I have a problem and I'm going to get to how we resolve it, I tell him right away, you know, I didn't, obviously I pray about it. I'm not just like, but you know, like as soon as I'm like, Lord, help me to keep my composure, but let me let this man know that, uh, 
I didn't like this. And then I tell them, and then we talk about it. And um, I try my best, or we try our best not to go to bed angry or to not, to not to go to bed with something unresolved, even if we have to agree to disagree. So we don't do arguing. We don't do fussing. Um, I just tell them, look, I didn't like what you did. You made me upset, but there's no fussing here. And then he'll tell me how he felt about it. And sometimes the reason that I said all that is I've learned the way that I perceived what happened was totally different than the way that he perceived it. So why even waste all that time being upset, you know, because as much as I talk trash, he's my best friend. So why be mm-hmm. upset with my best friend for all that time instead of just addressing it right away? So mm-hmm. that's how, you know, once I cool down a little bit and, you know, I've been like, all right, Lord, where are my mouth? Because, you know, I got a mouth then I go and tell them and then we talk about it and figure it out. All right, you can answer. Okay. That was a mouthful, wasn't it? I have to agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've never been one to like um, conflict or confusion, arguing, fussing, fighting. Um, if I've done something, tell me. Um, so I can try to fix it. And as she said, you know, a lot in our early stages of marriage was learning each other's ways. She had never lived with a man. I had never lived with a woman. We're two different people come from two different walks of life. And, you know, the way she was raised was different from the way I was raised. So the way I would do some things or things I would say or think that I would be doing correctly was not what she wanted or was not what she was looking for, or was not the response that she was looking for for me. Um, now, all these years down the road, you know, I'm getting a little bit better. I ain't there yet, y'all. We still got a long way to go. Um, but, you know, we kind of have learned each other's ways, I would say, um, now. And those moments are very far and few between, unless I'm doing something crazy, like, <laughs> don't start, sister. <laughs> <laughs> like working too much like working too much that that's been a really touchy subject here in our house since I've been home um, I've been we moved here in November and um I continue to work in Michigan and I travel back and forth for about seven or eight months and um, now that I'm home I'm in a different position at work and I've worked a lot of hours and I spend a lot of time at work and you know She doesn't see it quite like I see it. And I have to try to explain it to her. I was in a different capacity in Michigan and I've had a little bit more freedoms. Here, I got a different position. I have to do things different. Um, But as she says, she doesn't like to see people run over me. And I think that's what kind of pushes her buttons when she thinks they're taking advantage of me. Um, When they are taking advantage of him, but we um, don't. Yeah, but we deal with it. We deal with it. (laughs) Work is probably the biggest issue that we have now. We don't we don't have very many conflicts now. She just tell me what she think and it's over. Yes, dear. <clears throat> I learned. Yes, dear. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, he, he I, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna let y'all go. I'm not in denial, and I know what I'm saying. Um, when he's being taken advantage of, um, but I understand. I understand. So I'm going to leave that at that. Anyway, <laughs> next, we are going to, we are going to do pastor and lady mm-hmm. hall. She's not here. Oh, so she can't. Oh, we got to go to the old halls. But it was a perfect <laughs> hall. Sorry. <laughs> Today is his birthday. I didn't mean to say old. Stay your hall. I'll let you. That's all right. That's all right. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, wait. okay. Well, first of all, I want to say happy birthday to my husband. Thank you. Thank you. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. With the children and the grandchildren. So I think we he's he's very happy. But uh, a lot of times when we settle conflict is, we had to learn over the years on how to do it. 
because you can't just jump on everything that pops up. Because if you do, you're going to be arguing forever and a day. And I would say a lot of times when he will say something, a lot of times I agree, but I don't agree. But it keeps the and I keep on moving. Why am I gonna get my blood pressure all up? Uh-uh. I'm not gonna get my blood pressure up like that. I just agree to this. And, and sometimes he'll say something. I said, "Child, please." And I turn my head. Turn my head. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> but he don't see me. If he can see the look on my face sometimes, he would say, "Oh my God." <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and, and a lot of times too, I see him. He so he's a he's kind of easy at times, and I see people taking advantage of him a lot of times. And I will say so and so so and so. Then you see that and he said, "Well, son, he said just let it go. Just uh, he said I can speak for myself. You ain't gotta speak for me." And I said, "Well, so, uh, I'm I'm just being real. I said sometimes you act like you're crazy." <laughs> you, know, you just let this stuff go, you know, and, and sometimes you do have to say some things, you know, and we as as husbands and wives, we are protectors of one another. We should be protectors of one another and have each other back because I tell him all the time, he's my best friend. He is my best friend. He truly, truly is. And, uh, and I'll tell you something else, too. The way you handle conflict is when you first, to me, when you first get into a marriage, if you start off things a certain way, it's going to continue to be like that. If you don't want it to continue to be like that, don't start it off. Don't start it off. Because all you're doing is making that little, that little bitty monster get bigger and bigger and bigger. So a lot of times you just have to kind of stop, nip things in the bud right away. Just nip it in the bud and let it go. And I just find myself, you know, just kind of saying, okay, okay. A, a, a lot of times I don't want to say something so bad, but I said, I know if I say something, he going to kick back and it's going to end up on me. So what I do is don't give my blood pressure up. Me and him just be best buddies. So he thinks, <laughs> but that's what I, <laughs> I let him think it. I let him think it. He happy. I'm happy, so hey, you know. It's your piece. Uh, but the way you can, but seriously, uh, the way you, the way we do sell conflicts is, uh, we talk about it, communicate, see how he feel about it, and then he asks me how I feel about it, you know. So that's what we do a lot of times. Just kind of talk about, it, you know, tell each other your real feelings about the situation. If he hurt you, you. Because I have told him before, well, you know, that, that really hurt my feelings. You did so and so and so and so, you know, and he'll come back and, and he'll say, well, I thought about this and I thought about you saying that. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, so sometimes honesty is the best policy. Just be honest with each other. Yeah, we'll sell a lot of things like that. If I can jump in, like right in the middle of that, I think that's a lot yeah. of, a lot of things. I think. If we come to the realization of things, men don't think like women. We don't. <laughs> and the way we think things should be, a lot of times we may say things or do things and not realize what we're actually doing or what's actually happening. Um, and, you know, we may hurt your feelings or something like that, but we don't think like that. And like you said, communication is key. And unless you tell us these things, um, you know, I'm thinking something totally different than what she's thinking. And unless she tells me actually how she felt about the situation, I'll never know. The situation come up again and I'll do the same thing. I'll hurt her feelings again. And guess what? Sooner or later, we're busted up. So that was a, that was a good point. Come on, Pastor. Hall. Sorry. Hey, man. Uh, truly enjoying everything. But as my <laughs> wife was saying, just to piggyback on... Uh, <clears throat> Some of the things she was saying about selling conflict, uh, <clears throat> she have labored me as <laughs> always talking in parables, if you will. Yeah, I call him Jesus Jr. <laughs> <laughs> you call him what? Jesus Jr. 
Jesus Junior. <laughs> she said, "This the parable man." She said, "I got to hear a sermon or everything." She said, "I'm always talking in parables, but I'm in search of truth and understanding." And because really and truly, so many couples is and are. But once you go back and try to define the reason you are at art, it's so petty. It's nothing. So I like to walk back through it real slowly and say, let's take a look at what we went wrong. And she said, oh, here we go with another sermon. Here we go with a panel. But, but, but it's clarity. I'm trying to get some clarity so we can understand. And, and if there's a problem at this juncture, this is what we need to deal with. Mm -hmm. If I have a headache, I don't like to take Tylenol. I want to find out what's causing a headache. <laughs> and so that's what I was trying to, I always try to say, and that's how I believe in dealing with, with dispute. Let us slowly not get aggressive, speak with that still quiet voice <laughs> and let's find out the problem because I do have authority to lay hands on it. <laughs> <laughs> laying at horn of the hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> Let's break these halls up because I got a feeling these other halls, that one in the blue shirt, gonna have some crazy thing. So let's go ahead and go to the Austin. We'll save them other halls for later. He just oh, exegeted Lord. the text. <laughs> <laughs> well, in all honesty, when we first got married, uh, when conflicts was arise, would arise. I would leave, <laughs> not leave him, leave the house. <laughs> would leave. I would leave, I would. I would leave because I didn't want to say anything to offend him. I didn't want it to be more than what it already was. And uh, so I would leave. And I wouldn't even go far, I would go around the corner to McDonald's and then I would go to the stores and I would go shopping and then I would come back. Uh, but. During that time, he may or may not call me. And if I was ready to talk, I would answer. But if I wasn't ready to talk, I wouldn't answer. Um, but I would send a text, I'm okay, and go on about my business. Uh, but now, um, now it's not as difficult. Because, uh, you know, he, I've, I've heard daddy say, I don't have a problem with making him aware of my displeasure. So... <laughs> 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 so, uh, so um you know if there is something and it's it's usually you know like you said it's not normally huge and it's normally perception and um the tone and the the circumstances that arise around it but it's usually something small and uh i have learned how to choose my battles some things i just don't Amen. deal with uh right. Some things are just not important to argue with. But if it gets too tough, and he can attest to this, if it gets too tough, then I will pray. I won't say anything to him. He'll be talking and talking and talking, and I'll, and I'll look at him, okay, honey, and I'll be praying. And then if he's going to work or whatever he's doing, and I'll get a phone call, honey, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do it. I apologize. <laughs> Forgive me. Uh -oh. so, Watch so, your <laughs> Yeah, that's, that, that's pretty much how I do it. That's how you do it. Um, me, on the other hand, you know, uh, I've always been the type of person um, uh, that wasn't really into like much conflict. Like I don't, I don't want to deal with conflict. So I'd rather, if something comes up, I'd rather solve it right away and not have to deal with it, you know, a little later. I like to, you know, just as they say, nip it in the butt right, right quick so that it doesn't become much larger. And then I had to understand that, you know, and I've, I've been an educator most of most of my career. And, um, and so I'm so used to, you know, answers right away. And so I had to learn that, you know, there's times where 
you may need an answer right away, but then I had to also respect her timing as well. Mm -hmm. um, maybe she's not ready to talk about it. Uh, maybe she does need that cooling off period. Uh, and I had to learn that about the same thing. Um, and she had to do it with me. Um, because I thought I always needed answers right away until I got married. And sometimes I had to think to myself, maybe I shouldn't deal with this right now. Uh, maybe I am too heated or maybe I am too hot headed. Maybe I just need to cool off, you know, and talk about it a little bit later. So I had to respect the time that um, she needed. And, and, and sometimes, you know, in different marriages or different relationships, uh, we take space, um, as like a negative but sometimes space is needed you know that, yeah, that space yeah. is needed it's not like you're separating or anything but that like maybe a day or so of space you really need that time to maybe really rationalize what you want to talk about how you need to break it down so you know it it was difficult at first <laughs> a lot of people say you she's not you. talking to me <laughs> and i'm like lord please help me uh, but then you know being spirit led as we uh, most of us are uh, being in a you know a marriage uh early you know i have to rely on sometimes the holy ghost to help me and and to be my teacher because the bible says he teach you in all things right and so even when i was wrong you know i listened to the holy ghost and say okay he let me know you were wrong in that situation although i thought i was right i was actually you know wrong i was causing the problem so you know, it it made me deal with conflict a little bit different and being able to be both approachable and say, okay, I think we're ready to talk about this now. I think we're in a space and a head space where we're ready to talk about this. Let's go ahead and deal with it. And so it, it's always a learning process. You know, we've never made it. We've only been 10 yeah. years in, but, you know, uh, we've gotten advice, you know, and just learning about each other and when there's a time to talk about and when there's not a time to talk about it and then just bring it all together. But I want to say this too. Um, both of us, we're both okay with apologizing. We don't have to, I don't, I don't have to be right all the time. He doesn't have to be right all the time. Now there are times where we're a little competitive with one another, yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to, we don't have to be right all the time. And, um, we will apologize and we try, we don't, I don't think we've ever gone to bed uh, no. angry with each other no. at all. So, yeah. But we do be uh, be thinking, let's see who gonna apologize first. Maybe I should be the day, maybe I should be the two. I wanna see if she gonna come apologize and say, baby, I wrote it and be like, oh, that's so sweet. Okay, now I'm gonna give you my apology. <laughs> well, Thank know, you for apologizing. Y'all know how you, do, how you do the indirect apology? What you want to eat tonight? You <laughs> hungry? <laughs> exactly. You want to go shopping? You need your hair down here. Let me give you a couple of dollars. So what you know, we do those too. I don't. Know, you said a mouthful there. I'm. I don't like to sit around here and it's quiet. I can't stand when she's upset with me. No. That that burns me up more than anything, and yes. it's not burn me up to where I get upset about it. But I don't like these children. Yeah, they drive me nuts sometimes, making noise and all over the place and running and jumping everywhere. But for her to actually be quiet and not saying nothing, yeah, uh-uh. I'm like, she'll tell you, I'm like on her heels, like there's no tomorrow. What is the problem? What's going on? But you just help me out right there. Sometimes it's best to step back. Let's regroup. Let her regroup. Because most of the time, she the one that's quiet. I'm not. I'll just keep keep at it. Um, <laughs> and I won't leave you alone, Willa. And she's, Yeah. So I'm I'm gonna take that advice and I'm gonna when she quiet, I'm gonna try not to make her quiet though. But like I told you in the beginning, I am a man. And men do things to make them be quiet. So Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right. Um next we have <clears throat> Jumba and his wife. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> Oh, Lord. hold on. We're going to have a conflict. In first of all, first of all, let me just start this conversation by saying I had her at hello. <laughs> oh. You about to start. <laughs> anyway, no, just uh, no, jokes aside. Listen, hey, um, I'm like, I, I've heard what uh, 
my brother, Pastor Austin said, and also what my brother Eddie said as well. And I think in the beginning, this is a problem that I had in the beginning of our marriage is, and my wife will tell you, I'm one of them guys. I don't, if, if, if something uh, happens, occurs, that comes up between me and her, I want to talk about that thing. Let's talk about it now. Now. I don't want to <laughs> wait until <laughs> later. I don't want to wait until tomorrow. No, let's talk about it now. now. So she, you know, I had to learn that, okay, first of all, I'm in a marriage. And it's just not about me anymore. It's about me and her. So I might want to talk about it now, but she <laughs> does not want to talk about it now. She, uh, my wife is a person that she likes to, she wants to go. She wants to think. She wants to get some thoughts together before she says anything. I ain't used to that. I'm used to talking about it now. Let's deal with it now. Cause I don't want this to get, you know, you know, I always have said, the more you allow space, the more things grow. I, yeah. I've never, I've, I've never liked that. But again, when I got married, I had to realize it's not just about me. So I had to learn to let her take her time. And I was, man, I was, I'm like Eddie. I was, that, that just made me, you know, I didn't like that. Cause I'm sitting up here with this issue here on my chest and I need to talk about it. Cause that's how I handle that's how I handle it with myself. Let's talk about it so we can, I can get it off and we can move forward. But I had to step back and let her take her time. Let her get ready. Cause now when she get ready, then we can come together and actually um, learn something from each other and grow. Um, she, she's ready to talk about what it is she wants to talk about. And now I'm ready to talk about it, but I had to let her, it be on her time as well, not just my time. So it's a, it's reasoning coming together and allowing her to, to get ready for battle. I've liked that now. Yeah. That, <laughs> now. Like, now. So now, now. now, today, that was in the beginning. Today, we talk about it now. We talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Don't, don't listen to him. Baby, I'm sorry. <laughs> exactly. Hey, hey, we're not doing I'm, that. I'm going to get to that. <laughs> so here's the thing. In the beginning, I did not... And sometimes still now, I don't like to talk about it right then. Um, I I have anger issues, but they cover by the blood, pastors. They cover by the blood. All right. <laughs> All right. And, you know, I can go from zero to 100 real quick. And sometimes when we get into, you know, our little disputes, um, I listen to react versus listening to respond i don't i don't hear i what you saying i it don't make sense i don't want to hear it yeah all i want to do is yang, 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 back to you and sometimes i do like um trenae yeah uh -huh. trenae does i'll get up i'll leave because i at, at that time i don't want to talk about it i want to get away to where i can think because sometimes it could have been me. It, it, it could have been simply that I said something wrong or I did something wrong, but I need to get away so I can analyze the situation and think about it. Now, the difference between me and Trine is she said she'll text him and say, I'm okay. I don't text. <laughs> I'm not answering the phone. Stubborn as I don't know what. I want him to know that I am really upset. <laughs> I, I I I want I want him to know I want to come home. I got flowers. It happened like that one time. My coworkers can attest. I was I, 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 I stayed. <laughs> he brought me some chocolate strawberries to work. Come she on, broke baby, it down, sorry. baby. Baby, baby, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, baby. Baby, I'm sorry. But you know, I now I try to I try to listen to respond versus react but i still have my days where it's like 
Don't say nothing to me. Don't touch me. You know, we, we get in the bed. You know, I'm still angry. Like the Austin said, you know, we trying to see who's going to say, I'm sorry, first. Which is normally me. <laughs> normally normally him. It is. It is. But when he still say, I'm sorry, I'm still in the bed. Like, you better not touch me. Don't you get off me. <laughs> and I touch her anyway. I'll and, he still, and he still, he be like, the blood. Jesus. <laughs> Lord, God, God, God told me to hold her. And I'm like, and you know, that's killing me. Like, Lord, please, God, just, just make this man roll over and go to sleep. Jesus. Hey, that's the hall. My grandfather used to say, grab them devils and hug them. <laughs> hug that devil out of them. Hug that devil out of them. He would take me, he'd be like, the blood. <laughs> you know, and a person that just got in church, you standing there looking at them like, it ain't doing nothing for me. I'm mad right now. You know, you need to stop. But, you know, those, but then when he get into his baby, I'm sorry. I'm like, okay, now I got to act right. I do got to talk to him because we got to eat. I got to find out what he want to eat. I got to do all that, but I'm slamming pots. Huh? You can text him and ask him. Yeah, <laughs> right. I'm, I'm slamming pots in the hands and stuff because I'm still upset. Like, man, this dude, he, he done made me mad. Let me, I'm going to start doing, I'm going to text him what you want to eat. <laughs> oh, wow. But um, I, we have learned to talk about things, you know, because when we think about it, the stuff that we get angry at, at each other about is really not that serious. It's right. just something really minor and dumb. And we done we done set out and got mad over it. And the thing about it is like um, the other hall said, you have to talk about it right then because if you don't, that stuff start building up. And I used to, when we first got married, I used to talk about what he did last week, the prior week before that. And he'd be like, that happened last week. That. But I'd be so, I didn't want to talk. I, I bottled up everything. And then when we get into an argument, I'm letting it all out. <laughs> right. <laughs> wow. Let the cat out the bag. But now I don't do stuff like that. You just validated <laughs> what I heard a great preacher say. He preached a sermon. His name was Pastor Willie James Campbell. He was Willie Willie Campbell. Campbell. Oh, yeah. The, right. bi the bishop, the great, late, great. <laughs> bishop, God yes, sir. And yes, sir. He said in one of his messages, there's no scorn like a woman scorn. And don't take no offense. <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, no offense. <laughs> He said, because a woman don't forget. A man, hmm. listen, we don't, we forget this stuff. Don't, we going don't. on 10 or 12 years down the road yeah. and we get into a into it. And he, you remember way five years ago, you did this. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. He, there's no scorn like a woman's scorn because a woman don't forget. Yeah, you burn my bacon today. I'm ready for your chicken in a few minutes. We just <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. But, you know, I, I'm so sorry, everybody, on Facebook, our um, panelists cannot see your comments. You all have gotten some really funny comments. So when you get time, and I'll tell you why, when you get time, go back, Facebook. unless they're looking at Facebook, at your too, phone, at your phone, because we're, we're streaming from Zoom. But it's really funny. And I'm so sorry. I didn't want to interrupt people while they were talking. So you all have gotten some really good feedback. Um, but I am just so appreciative that, and I know that we picked the right people because for me, transparency is huge. Some people don't like transparency for whatever reason, but you can't help people unless you're willing to be transparent. That's right. That's right. You know, you can't, it doesn't mean that I love my husband even le any less because we have disagreements. That's a life. Right. And I know now, because when we first got married, I tell people this all the time, nobody really sits you down and really explains it to you. And it's kind of hard to do, but you go into it looking, you know, <laughs> oh my God, I love this man so much. And I did until he get on my nerves. Y'all you know catch that? I wanted to say, I, I wanted to say you, this. You caught that? Shayla wants to say something. You I wanted to did. say this, you know, Y'all men, y'all get on our nerves, but we love y'all so much that I don't know for the other ladies, but like when my husband hurt my feelings with an argument, 
it feel like somebody that took a little needle and poked me in my heart and my mm-hmm. heart is slowly leaking. I can feel that hurt in my heart. And sometimes he makes me cry and I have to go take a shower or something and let the water run in my face because <laughs> I, my feelings have been hurt. But I, but that's how I know I love him because I can feel that hurt that's up in here. And if, if you got a connection yeah. with your mate, you can feel that hurt. You It, you it hurt For a woman, it hurts us in our heart when they do something to hurt our feelings. Not Sometimes they don't even know that they done stuff to hurt our feelings oh, Lord. <laughs> and i can feel that in here when he when he does yeah. stuff that hurt my feelings and when he does hurt my feelings sometimes i don't want to talk about it because i'm hurt and i don't want to cry in front of him because i have always been taught don't cry in front of your husband when they make you upset mm. so i just go off to myself mm. that's a dr feel mm. moment <laughs> i can t- can I say something? Yes, yes ma'am. ma'am. Yeah. And to don't the... be a follower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> be a leader, but... <laughs> Period. Be a leader. But let me say, let me say this. There's other way to where you don't have to feel like a little needle is sticking. When you get through with them, you can make them feel the same way. You, <laughs> no. so you, you can make nice. baby, I'm sorry. I'm baby, sorry, baby. Baby, make, baby, I'm sorry. Ladies, That's what he be saying. ladies nice you can make fight. it do what it do. You have, hey, Whoa. you have the power. You have to use that power. I think I'm about to I'm about to push this lead button. I'm about to push this lead button. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. Exactly. You know, it's locked up. Bye. I'm about to push this red button here in the right lower hand corner. <laughs> yes. Yeah, see, and, and just to bounce off that, what she said, because sometimes, I mean, I know we we the men and we 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 uh, act uh, tough. We try to be tough, but sometimes y'all say some stuff that hurt our feelings. I'll be like. Let me go yeah, check my uh, manhood real quick. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Am I still the man? <laughs> but uh, y'all had this like type of snappiness to be like, when y'all started doing this, I'm like, uh-oh. You, I'm right. in trouble. Oh, they, they, do that, they do that in Saginaw? They don't live in Saginaw. <laughs> Detroit. Detroit. But, but like, you know, like a giraffe. You, you, <laughs> right. You got to know this. You got to know this. Oh, women, as I can see us, these, us four that's on here, we don't like for y'all to try to make us feel like we weak. So in heated fellowship, you gonna have, we gotta stand. Now we might run and cry later, but baby, you're not finna make us feel like a punk while we in the mix. You gonna hurt your head. Oh man! That girl said she got a little hood and laugh though. <laughs> she got a little hood and laugh though. Hey, right. remember she's from Sag Nasty. <laughs> Just a little bit. It just look just just where the camera at. Just about that much hood. Uh, about that much. It's not that much. He be testing my gangsters. He testing. <laughs> yes, but you know what? All of this is so true, and the fact that you all are willing to share that because people need to know that. Oh yeah, that's right. This oh, is right. what these are the parts that people don't talk about. Right. These are the parts that you know oh we were in heated fellowship and i didn't roll my neck like a giraffe but <laughs> guess what <laughs> i'm still coming back to him yeah you know despite what's going on because i think i've heard everybody on here tonight say that their spouse is their best friend right and i believe that that is the basis or the base of a good marriage other than the foundation of God, you need to be able to like that person. That's right. Because I tell people all the time, life is going to happen when you're not able to be lovey-dovey for whatever reason. Right. You know, I don't start a pastor senior hall because I know you're talking about me, but (laughs) but seriously, seriously, you know, I can look I can look back. We've been through some trying times. And I heard the Austin say, you know, they've only been married. Don't say only any 
in, anymore. Right. Because people don't even make it two years. Right. What? Right. Right. They don't even make it that same night. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. So to make a decade, honest. Y'all right. doing a hundred, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. To make 12 years in these days and time, and you still like him and he still yeah. like you and y'all still want to be together. I like yeah. him a lot. I know, <laughs> right? I know. Yeah. So oh, that oh, is, that's you sweet. know, you doing a hundred. And when I look back during some of the most toughest times of my life, whether we were married or not, you know who I can always remember being there? Mm-hmm. Ball head, milk dud. I know right. he did have hair at first but I can always look back no matter if it was triumph or it was one of the darkest times in my life this man has been there That's from right. when I was sick and couldn't when I couldn't do mm-hmm. you know who was there I have pictures to this day when I almost died he was the last person that I saw when I was put on before I went back to the operating room and the first person that I saw when I woke up that means a lot so he loves me on my best day and on my worst days so I'm always gonna step for him yeah back to you know the whole post office thing I'm always gonna step for him because he does the Mm -hmm. same for me Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. First lady exactly. Hall wanted to say something. I <clears throat> yeah, and and you know it means something to be with somebody. I was always brought up and taught you get with you somebody that's gonna love you, that you that's gonna stick with you through thick and thin. You may be Pastor Hall was a uh, he had a nice six pack when I married. I still have. <laughs> he had a nice six pack. I still okay. Have. He hey, have it, it's just hidden right out. now. <laughs> <laughs> and now, you know, hey, and yeah, that's it. I was like a four, a size four or six when we got married. But things change as years go on. But he's been there for me. I've been there for him. And it means something to have somebody that's going to stick there with you. I know he have been sick in the hospital. I have been there before, too. But he, like she said, he stuck with me through all of it, through all of it. Yeah. And I am so appreciative. I know one time he was so sick and um, he was in the hospital, but when we got home, he I was still waiting on him, waiting on him and, uh, you know, helping him. And he told me, he said, Sam, he said, I am so appreciative to you. He said, he said, girl, I believe you love me. He <laughs> said, because you have really stuck with me and been with, you know, been with me through all of this. And, you know, I thank God for, for my husband. I thank God for giving him. We only right. knew each other a month and a half before we got married. You yeah. know, we yeah. was engaged after three weeks. Three no. weeks we was engaged. Oh, yeah. Must have been a chick. What did he say? I forgot the term we to use. <laughs> we was engaged after three weeks. We had married him a month and a half. And we've been together going on 42 years. So don't let nobody tell you, uh, Pastor Austin, you know, 12 years, hey, Y'all are doing excellent, excellent. You're doing wonderful. All of you all are. And yes. And also, she have learned to call me oh, the great day. Oh, God. The great who? Wait, say that again. The great who? She called me the grave digger. Oh, he is terrible. I'm the last one to let him down. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Vicky, you know what? I will say, you know, I, I'm definitely enjoying everything I heard. And, um, you know, even... You know, we, we talking about when, you know, even in our bad times, you know, I've seen my wife land in a hospital bed. I've seen my wife when she wakes up in the morning. I'm not being funny. I'm just serious. It's not when she's at her best moments. But even in those moments, the thing that I know I love her because in those moments, she still looked like that woman that I fell in love with. You know, that, that same that's woman right, that right. at her worst, at her worstest time, right. she still looks like that woman that I fell in love with. And listen, I think I shared this story before. When I first met her, I met her. She had, her hair was a mess, 
I mean, it was a mess. She had on she had on blue jeans, a long shirt that came down to her knees with some Jordans. So she wasn't all fancied up. She wasn't, you know, prettied up, makeup yeah. out. She, but I, at that moment, I was like, wow, you know, wow. And that's just how I was. It's, yeah. So at those bad moments now, even now, I, yeah. I did a post back here some weeks ago. Um, I, it was a filter where her face was messed up. But even in, with that messed up face in that filter, she still was that same beautiful you know, that woman that I fell in love with when I first That's beautiful. fell in love That's with beautiful. her. You know, hey, and, and so it's that look, love gets us beyond what you see outside. Yeah. Okay. Love gets beyond makeup and and <laughs> and wigs mm. and all that different kind of stuff. Yeah. Love gets beyond that. Watch your preacher. So when you pull Don't that thing that. off, yeah. <laughs> I might see something, you know. Okay. That's a totally different look. <laughs> but you, you know, messed up. Goes... That, you you were doing it at first. You messed it up. That's how you know you love you. They love you because when I would have my hair braided up under them wigs and stuff, and you know, ladies, how we got she pull that thing off all that in and that girl yes, so. uh, tight for a minute. I told him one day I came home. I say, wait for it. Wait for it. Wait, 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 wait. Put that off. I was like, daddy. Sister Shayla, I did it in the car one day. We were getting in church. I, I couldn't I take it back all the stuff. Stuff. Yes, ma'am. And we must have got to be a bad way. I was like, uh uh-uh, uh, I got to take this girl off because I want to be comfortable. Yes, nah, I got to be comfortable. Yes, I'm, I've been stuffed for too long. I got to get off. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> that must be a common thing. We was in the car once and Vicky had her wig on, hair out, looking all pretty. We leaving church. Man, before we can pull out the church parking lot, what are you doing, honey? <laughs> we wait till we get down the street. Hey, y'all ain't gotta y'all gotta Put know we look off. pretty all the time. We sometimes be ugly. You gotta you gotta like the you gotta love the ugly. We love your ugly moments. Y'all love ours too. Cause like like okay. like, like first lady okay. hall say. He had a six pack. No, I still got one. I'm like, I don't know where it went. But now I got got a two liter. (laughs) (laughs) I got a two liter. A two liter. Two liter six pack times two. Well, well, size three. I was small. I can't even get one leg in a three. (laughs) Mm -mm. Yeah, but. He has been sick too, and I, you know, our vows say through sickness and health to death do we part, and I, w- I was there. I never left his bedside. Every, I would come home, and I worked at the, I work at the hospital. I would come home, check on my children. I would go back up to the hospital. I would stay. I would go to work because where I work at, we have like the showers and stuff. I would go in there take me a shower, put on my uniform, go to work. As soon as I get off, go check on the children, go right back up to the hospital. I was always there because, and and I, they was like, well, what if he can't walk or what if he can't do that? Well, I'm just going to have to deal with it because this is, I, I can't let him go because he's sick and he's down. Right. Because like his right. his grandmother used to say, I leave him to go get somebody else. I'm picking, I'm getting off the same shelf I got him off of. I ain't going no higher. Oh, I ain't going no lawyer. I'm looking for somebody that was that's just like him. So why not love the one I'm with? Love, love you know, the one you with. One you get. Love the one you with. I tell him it's cheaper for him to keep. I, I like that. I, 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 told, I like that. I, I, I ain't got time to train no another one. No. I, I, I done trained this one for 20 years. However, some years. Who waited? Who waited seven years? Who, who it sound like did the train? Let me see what I'm pointing at. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the trainer it becomes the train. Hey, you you, you, you should have listened to, to Pastor Hall. You should have had that chicken in that bag. <laughs> I would have gotten okay. a lot sooner. Man, she made yeah. it work. I worked hard for her. She didn't know what she wanted. She didn't know what she wanted. We we done talking about that. We gonna, <laughs> it's gonna be an every month conversation, dear. It's my oh anyway. We're gonna do talk about it. Come on. 
What you got? Listen, it's your show. Does anybody else want to say anything? And then I have one question from a viewer and we will end this. Did the Austins have anything that they wanted to add to that? I was trying to, uh, I, I mean, I kind of stepped out for a moment, but what, what were we really talking about? I came in. Difficult moments, you know. Difficult moments? Yeah. Um, well, I can say um, really what 2019 and 2021 were two of the most challenging years of our marriage um and <clears throat> some know some don't know uh, in 2019 between 2019 and 2021 we lost a total of seven immediate family members wow. and um wow. that would include um my great-grandfather on my side well they're both of our grandparents but so you all know how it went uh my great-grandfather my stepfather um his grandmother that was in february our youngest daughter was born in May of that same year. And then July 1st, his grandmother left, uh, left this world. Um, we had her homegoing service. We came back the very next day, my grandmother passed. And then seven days after that, my great-grandmother, which was her mother passed. And so we had, um, we had a really, really hard time during that, during that phase. Uh, because we were we were bouncing back and forth um, trying to I was trying to be there for him he was trying to be, be there for me we had a newborn daughter and then we had two other children and then in the year of 2021 May 3rd his dad passed and then May 7th my my sister passed and so oh, no. we um, it it was really a, it was a tough time I was at the funeral home planning for my sister's service while his dad's wake was actually taking place so we um, those were some challenging times and I really thank God for him I do because he was he was able to um he was able to pray for me and you know we joke and laugh and all that but it is such a blessing to have a husband that is saved and knows god yes, for real is. and can yes, go to is. him for me yes it is um, i know women yes. we pray and we talk to god but it is a rarity to have a husband that has a relationship yes. with god and can pray for his yes. wife and so yes, um, those were those were two very difficult times and i am so thankful mm -hmm. to have my best friend, my road dog here. We was on the road too, y'all. We we was on the highway, right. but um, he was there for me, and you know whatever whatever money I needed and whatever we needed, yeah. praise God, he was right there. Hallelujah. And I <laughs> and I and uh, during that time, you know, with dad, my dad being the senior pastor, we had a lot of transition at the church, yeah. and so you know, in a way, although I was grieving, I lost. I, I had to be strong for her. I said, okay, um, I know she's grieving heavy. So I instantly stopped my grieving, you know, and, and anybody knows my father know me and my father was like this, oh, yeah. you know? And so, you know, although it was hard for me, I said, okay, you know, I have to make sure as being a priest of my home and, and you know, being her covering, I said, okay, I'm going to pause, pause my grieving for a second because, you know, I'm supposed to make sure that she's covered right. and she's taken care of. So I paused whatever I was going through at the church, you know, the transition, being in leadership at the church, I paused everything. I just, just put everything on a halt. And everybody was like, why are you not crying? Why are you not grieving? I said, I don't have time. You know, I got to make sure she's good. I had to balance between my wife and my mother. And so it was a lot of stuff that's going on. But uh, the God that we serve, you know, when we talk about that peace that passes all understanding, he will give you peace in this, literally in the midst of a storm. And a lot of people don't know that, but when you right. when you rely on Jesus and you seek for that peace, he will give you peace when everything around you is very chaotic. And so in the midst of me stopping my grieving, I was rely, re, uh, able to rely on the Holy Ghost to comfort me while I was comforting her. And so when it was time for me to grieve, it wasn't as heavy um, because I sought the Lord earlier on before I started my grieving and say, okay, I'm I'm pausing for my wife, but as I'm pausing, give me peace and lift the burden so that when it's time for me to grieve, it won't be so heavy. And she's not losing me in the process because sometimes when men grieve, we pull up, we pull away, you know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of space. So I didn't want a lot of that to be a problem. So I 
tried to deal with it early on. But thank God for my wife who also covers me, you know, in prayer. You know, I don't just pray for her. She prays for me. So we were able to deal with that. And in addition to that, I want to say, I think that would be how what, what you all have said, and even um, a part of our story, well, our story, um, I think that would be the definition of what the Bible says a help meet is. We are to be there for one another. What Where you're short, I'll step in. And where I'm weak, you step in so that we work together as a unit. We're two, but we become one. And so we work together as a unit so that we're successful in our, all of our endeavors, including the marriage relationship marital relationship amen amen i totally agree i have two questions now you all and um the first one is i will celebrate eight years of marriage with my husband any advice and anybody can take that for more than one so what now then over again this is our viewer from guatemala she says she will celebrate eight years of marriage with her husband any advice keep celebrating Yep. Okay. That's it. All right. Keep celebrating. You got to yeah. discover each other every day. Yeah. That's it. Every day. Here's the thing, man. We change. Our bodies change. Our mentalities change. Right. Every day. And when we get to the point where we stop discovering each other, yeah. we then we're behind. And we got to try right. to play catch up. But if I continue to work to discover, me and my wife have been married 25 years, but I'm still discovering because she's right. constantly changing. Mm -hmm. So if there's constant changes, then I got to make sure I'm there to keep digging, keep digging to figure this thing out. Because what she like today, I guarantee you, <laughs> five years, maybe even next year, she might not even like that thing. That's but if right. I'm not discovering that, then I'm behind. And then I go to wondering, well, wait a minute, what's going on here? Why you used to be like this, so you used to like this. Well, times change, and she no longer likes that certain thing. So, but I gotta keep working to find out what is it that she likes now? What is it that you know, what can I do uh, to 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 uh, uh to to make this better? It's just constantly discovering each other and asking, ask man, look, asking God for help and and asking each other. You know, other married couples, you know, a closed mouth will not get fed. Right. Yeah. You can't act like, you know, we can do this thing on our own. We can't. Let me give you a perfect example. Man, Jesus Christ, the son of God on his way to the cross, carrying the cross on his back. Scriptures say on his way, he dropped it. Somebody else had to come and help him carry That's that right. cross. Indication, we cannot do this thing by ourselves. Right. We need Amen. some help. We need each other. And uh, reaching out, talking to each other, you know, that also helps out with, you know, um, things that we deal with in marriages. So, right. And never <laughs> stop dating each other. Mm -hmm. um, the same thing it took to get that person is the same thing it's going to take to keep them. Sometimes I leave my husband, I, I go and I, I buy cards just, just because cards and I'll, I'll leave them for him or I'll leave a note and say, hey, I left for work. I was thinking about you. I'll see you when I get home. Your coffee is ready. Breakfast is in here or whatever. And those little things, just doing it without them asking or you just making that notion, those are the things that keep them falling in love with you and you with them. Is those those little gestures that you don't think mean nothing, but it means the world to that person. So never stop dating. Sometimes, even if you got kids, we ain't got none at home. Thank God. Um, have date nights. Have a date where you set aside one day of the week and y'all go and date each other and re-examine each other all over again and find out his likes and you tell him your likes. And just have one day out of a week where you set aside to say, this is our date night. Don't go hang with your friends. Don't do nothing. Just let mm -hmm. it be you and your husband's day. And put that thing up. And when you dating, yeah. put this away. Because hey, yeah. I can't be dating him and I'm at I'm at the table and I'm doing this. He at the table doing that. Yeah. We should have just stayed at yeah. home. That is the truth. That's right. the restaurant. And I, I look around at tables when we go out which the everybody be on the that'll have to be a subject that we talk about at a later time is 
young parent or young couples with children and how you yeah. find time to date and, and still navigate. do things and navigate through life with little children at home. Because it can be done. Because that's yeah. what, that don't have to be something we yeah, talk we about. But talk I about go to a restaurant can, and I see, ask, I oh, see people ahead. all the time at the table. This is what everybody's doing. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is this has become our lives. I heard somebody say, "Take all those phones, throw them in the center of the table, and yeah. nobody touch anything, and have a conversation." Yeah. Because we, as people, not just couples, but as people, just in this society now, this has become our life. Yep. Yeah. This is. I'm surprised we don't have more people with neck damage because this is what we do. <laughs> <laughs> and, let me, and let me say this too. Um, another thing too. Keep the line of communication open, yeah. you know, and also take little trips. If it's just a little getaway trip somewhere, you just you too, you know. Uh, I mean, just for the weekend, a couple of days, just go somewhere, get away, you know, focus on one another. You know, as my husband used to say, if we don't go nowhere, but go to McDonald's and make googly eyes at each other. Right. You know what I mean? Be together, you know, right. let each other know that that spark is still there. You know, anytime your husband can say something to you and all 32 of your teeth is showing if you still got them, that means (laughs) show them, sister. Get on over in this camera, show them. Right. Right. And another thing, you know, uh, make intimacy a priority. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of people, you know, have the misconception that intimacy is just sex. It's not. Right. Right. It's it's not just sex. That's Um, right. you know, like you said, you know, if you're going to make uh, McDonald's and you're having googly eyes or, you know, cuddling up and yeah. watching a movie yeah. together just or, have, just you know, going out to a dinner you know? and just appreciating one another. Um, but sex is important. You know, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. And not yeah. just sex, but sex yeah. is different from love making. Uh-huh. It's two right. different yeah. things. Yeah. And yeah. so you have to make priority that be, th- because that is important, you know, because not only do you want a spiritual connection, but you want a natural connection. You mm-hmm. want to be, you know, connected to each other. And so, and that makes love making much more important and enjoyable <laughs> when you have that connection. So yes, make intimacy a, a, a priority. Again, it's not just sex, you right. know, it, you know, going for a long walk on uh at night on the on yeah. the beach or something yeah. like that just you know yeah. make it a priority and then I'm and then that 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 right, right, right. we can't we don't want to we don't want to just throw that away now we don't right. Right. and make it last throughout the day do the little stuff <laughs> leave the notes on the window so I'm when it's surprised. time to hit the bed it's time to take care of business yeah we, we <laughs> definitely want to keep that in the loop we don't want to throw that out keep that in the loop I'm, I'm, not, be quiet. I'm surprised but, that question hasn't come up yet. I've just been waiting for somebody to type something in here about that. Hey, we ain't I'm scared. Not, we ain't, we ain't scared. scared. <laughs> I'm, I know it's coming. He's I, right about the intimacy oh. part. It does. It's not just sex, but when you do those things, like it, it will lead up to that. Because some us women, we don't like to just jump. Mm-hmm. We want to be led up to that thing. If, if, Hello. You know, I don't know if it's children on here, so I'm trying to keep it perfect. But we, we want it to lead up to things. Right. We just don't want to just be like, okay, here we go. <laughs> when we do things like that where they're holding us and they're coloring right. and watching one of our favorite movies. I like Lifetime movies. Oh, Lord, he don't yeah. like Lifetime no, movies. No, no, but no, when no. he lay next to me or watch a Lifetime movie, it's like, okay, this Even movie ain't so interesting. Watching, no huh? He couldn't lay me now. Right. Now I'm getting all mushy on the inside. Right. Pick me up when the movie it's- over. And see, yeah, some people know. can't just go from cold to hot. Some people need to be warmed up. Exactly. <laughs> and so that intimacy <laughs> part will warm them up. Right, right. And and once what, you get what, ready, it helps. Right. <laughs> once you get so, ready, wake me throw, up. Throw, throw it out signals. <laughs> throw it out signals, huh? <laughs> I want to say too, though, <laughs> it is important. To have, it is important to have fun. It is important to have fun. There have been times where we'll pull out the Nerf guns and we'll just start shooting at each other. And sometimes our children are in the mix. Sometimes our children are not in the mix. And then we'll do that and we'd be tired and laid out across the couch and we'd grab the remote and turn on a movie. But those things are so important laughing at each other and with each other that's yeah. also funny i'll yeah. tickle him he'll tickle me he'll pick me up 
y'all y'all see how y'all see the difference yeah, we have seen you all no. Y'all, <laughs> I messed with her a lot. I didn't see some of the Facebook posts. Yes, I oh have my. the closet. The closet. Hey, don't be talking about it. <laughs> it was on Facebook, honey. I was in the, don't, listen, don't be telling my business, Eddie. <laughs> it was on Facebook. I didn't tell her she told it. I, I told. Oh, I commented somebody. on his post and told him, "Honey, don't be telling my business." No, but having fun. <laughs> Having fun is also very important. Very, very, yeah. very. Yes, it is. Yes, it yes, is. It is. And 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 since we're in a modern day, mm -hmm. I text him throughout the day, and you know, let him know how much I love him. Sometimes I'll send him yeah. a message and say, "Thank you, honey, for working so hard for our family." Or I'll acknowledge something that he's done that he may think is just natural or normal, or it's a part of his responsibilities, so that he knows that I I acknowledge it, I see it, and I thank him for it. Yeah. And see, you know what? This I I, I really appreciate conversations like this because i'm gonna be honest with you, you know um as a as 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 ch our church children i've been i've grown up in church all my days me too. and yeah, me too. you know it's a lot it. of things that <laughs> you know i just you know i didn't know it was okay for uh my wife to show up at my job in a um in a, a trench coat you know and 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 just say uh -oh. hey hey you know, hey, boy. How you doing? What? Oh my goodness! You know that that kind of stuff. That's good to me. That's, <laughs> that, that's that spark in that marriage, and you know, yes, it's yes. important to have those moments together. That's keeping that fire, that fire hot, that 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 blaze going. Just that's what I mean by discovering each other. Cause mm -hmm. you know you just the same old, same old, same old, same old, same. And listen, old, same old. Same old. Right. So, hey, we gotta continue to discover each other. Discover, right. discover. Mm -hmm. And know, when but, I had that coat on, I was like, Lord, please don't let no police stop me. What Jesus. you talking about? <laughs> what you talking about? Y'all, y'all, do y'all know I was ready to punch out early and go home? You know, you know, there was something that we, we decided we were going to do when we first got married. And we decided that um, every other year, we would take an opportunity to plan our anniversary. So the first mm -hmm. year he planned, the next year I planned so that we wouldn't run out of ideas. And we've done some fun stuff. And I don't tell him my plans. He doesn't tell me his plans. We just, okay, today is the day we're going to do whatever we're going to do. Put on this, mm -hmm. this, and this, and be ready at this time. And, mm -hmm. and we just go. So that's another way to, to um, interject intimacy because you, you, you're adding something, something uh, sporadic. Yeah, and that's right. To a certain extent, that's right. To your element of, to an element of your marriage. So that's also another way that you could do that. And yeah. I tell you something else we do, we have did. One time we did it and we ended up, we didn't know where we was going. We just got in the car. And we just started riding. And we ended up in Jacksonville, Florida. Okay. We bought clothes and everything once we got down there. We didn't take nothing with us. It was just us. And when we got down there, that's what we did. We bought everything we needed once we got. And that was just fun to me to do that. And we did that not too long ago again. We ended up at Montgomery, Alabama. I think we ended up in Montgomery. I didn't know where we was going because he just kept driving and driving and driving. I said, where are we going? He wouldn't tell me. And he said, we just ride. So we ended up in Montgomery. But that was that's fun to me because, you know, it's like you, you're you not sure what's going on. So, you know, a little thought come to me said, Lord, he ain't finna kill me, is he? <laughs> he ain't finna get rid of me. <laughs> I said, he's, he's supposed to be the pastor. <laughs> supposed to be the pastor. <laughs> Pastor go a while. <laughs> Person no, but that was fun though. You know, you, you gotta think of little things to keep that spark alive, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, I know um, for, I know for me, you know, Victoria's Secret has become one of my favorite stores. What I'm you talking about? Her. And I'll get a I, I'll get a lace set and say, put that on so I can take it off. What you talking about? <laughs> I know you know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, so person from, from Guatemala, that's how you get to yes. change that. the subject. Don't change it. Don't that's change my subject. Change it. change it. Go ahead and change That's it. how you get to the years right <laughs> where at. 
the ball. That the that that because you're continuing to date each other. So you're at eight years now. Somebody, I, I think, um, the Davises are at ten or twelve, and the Austins are at ten. We're at twenty five, and I forgot how long the 42, other home. 42, 42. That's a nice. So dynamic. that's how you get there is by doing these things that we're talking about. Like I told my husband, I said I want to go on a on a, do a thing where I go to the store, I buy him what I want him to wear. Oh, God. he buys me what he wants me to oh, wear, and we go on a date. You can't take it back. You yeah. got to wear what yeah. the individual bought for you and we go exactly out right. on a date school, with each God. other. And Might I mean, I nothing. think, you know, we've been married 25 <laughs> years, so I think he know me well enough to know what I like and what I don't like, what yeah. I wear and what I won't wear. The date's going to be at home. You better watch it. You say what? The date might be at home with nothing. You better watch it. Yeah, what you talking about? What you talking about? Back there I'm out of there and he's bringing me back. Yeah, we're gonna change that because we, we ain't gonna make no it. idea. I cook you dinner. Right, uh -huh. we'll, 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 there's kitchen clothes tonight. Period. Exactly. <laughs> we are going to go to another question. We want to keep this there down. One more question. Whoa, 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 sister. I'm just getting heated up now. Uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> one of the little things to be serious. Okay. Um, another thing is too, like we. Uh, in church, all of us, you know, we're, we're saved and everything in, in church. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times we, you know, I, I always said the Lord is truly good in his in, in His place. But I believe he wants us to have some happiness, too, because a lot of us, we get wind up in church, 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 church. And the next thing you know, the years pass, the years pass, the years pass. But you have to put a halt at, at some form and enjoy your marriage because God wants you to enjoy your marriage. Right. He don't want you to just be down here just I don't believe he do. I believe the Lord wants us to enjoy our lives, to enjoy mm -hmm. our marriage. Right. I often say I don't want to wait till I get to heaven. No, I want to enjoy some things down here on this earth right here right. while I'm right. here. I that do. is now, that's absolutely I correct. Do. Bishop, and one thing about me and, me and Pastor Hall, we are very open mm -hmm. to stuff like that. We're very open-minded like that. So, mm -hmm. you know, I've seen is, I've, you know. I've seen more church people today divorced mm. yeah. than I've seen that's what I'm in a long time. That's what I'm and saying. And that's just the reason that's is because everything yeah. is just church, 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 church. Mm -hmm. And then we mm -hmm. neglect our homes, our wives, mm -hmm. our children, yep. you that's know. So I've seen that. So it, yeah, no, I it's totally true. agree with that. It is it's yeah. very it's true. And I heard I heard yeah. not too long ago, Bishop Sheard said in one of his messages, I, I listened to a lot of people, we have to stop as the church demonizing everything. Right. right. Amen. Throwing yes. everything. He said, God yes. didn't create this big old world and this big old earth for just the sin of man to Thank enjoy. Mm -hmm. We Thank as you. saints of God are supposed to enjoy some of this stuff. And yes. we can't just say yes. everything that goes on is of the devil. No, it's not. That's right. Get out That's there and right. have fun. Enjoy yourself and enjoy life. Right. I, and, and let just me say to, this. Y'all think Bishop Shear and First Lady Shear don't enjoy themselves. Oh, oh yeah, they can oh. draw they say no, you better believe they do. Yeah. You better believe they do. Yes, sir. I, I believe that. Yeah. <laughs> I know they and keep that spark alive. <laughs> just to bounce that off, you know, uh with me being uh, a leader in the church, there's been some times where we we've canceled Bible studies, you know, we've canceled services. We said this time is for you to enjoy your family. Amen. Because family Amen. is very important in the church. That's right. That's you know, right. Th th this time there's no Bible study. Go take your family out, go to a baseball game. Go, you know, when we was coming up. They used to say baseball was of the devil, basketball was of the devil, yeah. the television was of the devil, you know, uh, all that. <laughs> but as you learn and grow, you find about. out, yeah, you find out yeah. none of that's true and none of that can be back with scripture. So as we learn and grow, we say, okay, I'm going to skip church today. I, I went to church the last couple of nights. This night I'm taking off. Or, you know, you lead in church and say, you know what, today, don't call my phone unless it's an emergency. You need prayer. You know, you, you're able to go to God for yourself today. 
You know, I, I turn it off my phone. You go to God for yourself. You know, and this is me and my wife's time. Amen. You know, what's wrong with that? If you need some help, call another elder of the church, another Amen. missionary of the church, but don't call me because right. I have to give my wife her time. Amen. And so, you know, res respect that time, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, balance, yeah. balance is important. Yeah, balance all the way across the board is important. Yes, it Amen. is. Don't balance Very time right. time for yourself. You cannot balance time uh for your spouse because you won't be any good. Mm. You don't balance mm. time for your spouse, you won't be able to balance time for your family, and you won't be any good. So yes. to, to me, you know, to me, it is important to have <laughs> it's important to laugh. All this that we're doing, this is important and it's healthy. It is helpful for us to do these things. Yeah. Um, right. You know, like he was saying, having fun and going out. We'll, we'll go out to dinner and, and he'll text and say, okay, well, we're not going to be on prayer tonight because we're having a date night. And, and I mean, it does not mean that we're not praying. It does not mean that we backstage. Right. It does not mean right. we don't have salvation. We don't know the Lord. That's right. But sometimes he will tell you, you need to spend time with your spouse this time. You you need you you need to slow down. You're moving too much. You're doing too much. Even at convocation. Convocation workers need all them other means that is not a vacation. Take a vacation. Amen. Amen. Thank you. That's right. Amen. Thank That's right. you. I heard another I heard a lady say that. She told me, and I won't call her name. Um, God You're rest right. her soul, but she told me out of her mouth, if she she was in church, she devoted her time to God, she did everything in the church, in the church, in the church, and her husband left. She said, <laughs> if I had a spent more time at home with my husband, I probably would have him today. I spent too much time. And she said, but that's what we were taught then. You know, it's church, church, church. But, you know, that's all they knew then. Times are different now. There's so many more resources and things out there for us as young saints and people of God um, to where we know these things are different now and times are different. So I looked at that and what she told me, and I'm like, all right, I know what to do. I can't, God is head in my life. He's number one. Amen. But as Pastor Austin said, God is a family God. Mm -hmm. And God said, what well, mm -hmm. he put together, let no man tear no asunder, Absolutely. including me. I can in the ministry. In the ministry. I can be the very first one. If I'm spending too much time in the church house and this house right here ain't in order, it's Amen. all in order. Man. It is. How That's can right. a man That's rule the house of God and his own house. Your own house. Right. That's right. Thank you. That's that's it. It, it, you know what, Eddie, and a lot of, uh, you know, that's that's another reason that I've heard it all my days. I ain't getting in church. Why not? Because y'all don't do nothing. Mm -hmm. All y'all do yeah. is go to church. Every yeah. time I see y'all go to church, yeah. go to church, go to church. Well, no. Hey, man, listen, we are we are people, too, that that's like so enjoying <laughs> each other. We are people, too, that <laughs> like laughing and having a good time. You know, so oh, wait, wait, yeah. I forgot my pastor on here. Pastor Hall, I'm still coming to work at church, all right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. So, um, you good. asked Carolyn that Sunshine good. Band got to wait. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's right. That is That's so <laughs> it is. But, but wow. you know, wow. you know, a lot of and to piggy off what my husband said, you know, a lot of people say they're not getting in church because we can't do anything. We we everything we do, it has to be, as they say, holy. But I like to have fun with my husband. We 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 as church people now we we have st certain standards that that we must yeah. uphold as being, you know leaders in the church and followers things of that of nature and followers of Christ. There are certain standards that we uphold. However, we do have fun. We like to laugh. We like to joke. We like to play games. We like to, to, to do things with, with this right here. We, we love to do that. You see us laughing and talking and having fun. So we're not all just churchy churchy right and 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 not a, not and we don't like to have fun we love to have fun we 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 like going out with other couples and most of the time when we go out with other couples we do talk about christ but that's not our whole conversation right. while we're out no. hanging with each other we talk about life we talk about right. other things mm -hmm. we laugh we have fun yeah. you know yeah but there are certain standards that 
as followers of Christ that we cannot do yeah, we have to right. as followers right. of Christ. Right. But we right. do have fun. Right. That's right. You can have good, clean fun. Yes, clean you can. Fun, yeah. We church. Don't get it twisted. Yeah. We churchy. Yeah. We churchy. But, we church. we church. Hey, don't get yeah, that twisted. I don't want you to get that. But twisted you can enjoy yourself. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we have yes. we have yes. standards because some y'all yes. ain't gonna catch us at the bar doing no. no. all of that right. stuff. That, right. that we don't exactly. do that. No. Right. But right. we can mm -hmm. go to Applebee's that sells alcohol yeah. and have fun and have a nice conversation and. You know, some people right. look at us. Oh, y'all up in here, they sell alcohol. What's wrong with me sitting up in here? Right, I ain't drinking. I ain't drinking oh, alcohol. Sell alcohol. So what's wrong I ain't sell alcohol. alcohol. Right, right. Yeah. 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 Right. I mean, Walmart. So, right. but you know how you got those people that think you so they think you're so churchy that you mm -hmm. can't do anything, and that's the images that they portray on us. That's why some people mm -hmm. say I ain't getting in church because y'all can't do mm -hmm. nothing. We do do stuff. Mm -hmm. We have fun. Right. We go out. We, we hang out. We laugh. We we'll laugh mm -hmm. at your jokes. And I but think we ain't gonna sit in your foolish, you know. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. And I, you know what? And and it makes me think. You know, with and I always think about the generation that's coming behind us. Uh, these conversations, these type of conversations, are important because. You know, we don't want them to have the wrong understanding of what marriage is. You right. know, on we can't do this and we our marriage have to be all born. All we do is go to church. And no, you know, right. there's a lot more to marriage than just the church. You know, it's it first natural, then spiritual. And so yes. if we continue to have yes. these com conversations between married couples, they will see that there is more to marriage than just, you know, putting a ring on it. Correct. And popping out babies. That you can have absolutely Amen. true. Bible tells us to seek the things of this world to do what? what Who that? I'm supposed to please? Me, 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 me. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. So that I can please her. Right. Um, but I think God, I'm I'm so thankful for this panel. I'm so thankful for each of you. And I'm I'm really seeing now that um God has given us what is that? Oh, that little boy. oh that God has given us um this vision. Um, there's so many people out there, as we said in the beginning, that um, are married today and tomorrow they're getting an annulment or they're divorced or they're separated. And it, a lot of it is because of simple lack of communication and understanding. Mm -hmm. It's over petty little small things. So I, I'm hoping and praying that we're reaching a community of somebody. If we don't do nothing but help one person. On my phone, somebody texted me right now and already said, man, I like that Austin couple. So y'all, oh, y'all, y'all, y'all in the bag. I hope y'all come back with us. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. I hope we can add y'all to the panel of, of people. This, this is great. I think she's got something else though. And we won't, we're going to try not to be on very much longer because I know everybody's probably got something to do. Um, but this has been like phenomenal. And if you have something you need to say, you want to say, keep talking. I mean, I am retired. Look, I am retired. <laughs> so I don't rub it in, first of all. Enjoy rub myself. In. Don't rub it and in. What I want to say too is that you know um, each of us have our different years of how long we've been married, but mm -hmm. I can't look at the Austins and say y'all can't help me. Me and my husband been married for twenty five right. years. Right. I can't look at them That's and right. say that because it could be something in their marriage. Yeah, that can that help can me. Same way with the Davis. Same way with, with, with the other halls. It's something that we all can contribute no matter how long we've been married. Mm -hmm. I can listen to, to the ones that's been married shorter than I have and say, oh, you know what? That I'm gonna try that. That that just might work, yeah. you know. So I can't, I would mm -hmm. never look at somebody and say, Oh, I've been married 25 years. You can't tell me nothing. You only right. been married five. No. No, you can always learn something. I can always <laughs> learn something from somebody else. And I get, and this is my final word. When you earn the title as a husband, when you earn the title as daddy, you're doing something good. Amen. <laughs> man, man, I love every moment. Man, you got oh, wait a minute. Right. Oh, was that oh, oh, was wait that a minute. benediction pastor? No, no, I'm thinking he talking about the children. Nah. About the children. Nah. 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 When she call you daddy, you doing something good. Oh. Hey. What's my name, baby? Come on, daddy. What's my name? Eddie. Come on. Big daddy. What's my name? 
Come on. Don't show up. Don't show up. What's my name? No shame in my game. Come on. Look, she might not say it. I know it anyway. It don't matter. You ain't got to say nothing. I knew my name before I came on here. Right. You ain't got to say nothing. I heard that all the time. Just call me Big Daddy. Big Daddy. I heard that daddy. No, don't keep looking and smiling. You ain't get your face said out, baby. Your face said out. Hey, Vicky, did Eddie earn his yet? You got that right. All these years, big daddy. That's big right. Daddy. Say it and say it loud. I know yeah, that face. That face said it all. I don't got to say nothing else. Right there. Oh, look, we ain't got nothing to prove. We already That's proved. Right. It. Thank you, brother. Thank you. All right, they really vocal tonight. I have vocal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute, so, ladies, y'all know we gotta bring it the next one. We All right, gotta make them maybe we gonna have a we uh, gotta have a huddle or something. Right, we exactly. gonna get it. We'll get them tonight. We'll get them the next night. Yeah, yeah. give me somebody, sister Brink. Say, give me some change, and I will call you, daddy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you know what? He will write over his whole check, so he's earned them strikes. <laughs> When she take care of me the way she do, I don't mind handing it over. Absolutely. I will go broke. Listen, Absolutely. I will not eat all day and give it all to her. Will right. she take care of me? The Man, please. Oh. Money ain't nothing. I can nope. make that and a drop of a dime. I, I'll go out and right. hustle and do what I got to do. That's she right. take care of me the way she take care of me. Please me right. the way I need to be pleased. And my children don't look any kind of way. My house don't That's look right. any kind of way. I come home 10, 11 o'clock at night and she downstairs cooking me something to eat. Place sitting on the oh, table. Man, ain't no way in the world. Amen. What nobody say. Man, it, it, it makes I you will work five jobs to take care of this one. It, right. it makes Amen. you want to do that. You never got to go back to work. It does. Yes. It, it makes you want to do that. Yeah. But hey, bro, I got to keep me a couple of dollars for a sandwich, though. Man, right. <laughs> I gotta keep she gonna pack that. She's gonna pack it. Ain't gotta worry about it. Yeah, I'm gonna pack it. I'm gonna put it. it in that brown paper bag and put it in my pocket. Yeah, I might wanna know. <laughs> <laughs> I put it in my bag. She ain't, she ain't letting that red paper bag go. Hey, so you so since it's in your pocket, you gotta tell we gotta come and get it, right? <laughs> well, you know what? I could put that, I could put that coat on and take it to him. Woo! <laughs> 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 We'll take it. <laughs> I want to say we did have some. We have someone on. It's their eighth anniversary. It's Lysandra and Samuel. It's their eighth anniversary. So we just want to wish them a happy anniversary. Happy anniversary! anniversary. Happy anniversary. In these days, happy time, anniversary. that is a lot. Yeah. And I have one more question, but before I do that. We are monetized on Facebook and we got 200 stars. So I want to thank my sister-in-law, Daisy, for sending those. Thank you, um, Daisy. Thank you, Daisy. Thank you, thank, you, thank, you, thank you. you. Also, we had a question and this is more of a um, premarital question. And the question was, I'm single. I actually got to find it, y'all. I should have pinned it. Uh, I'm single and I want to be married. Let me just triple check that question before I, y'all had it going, going. What if I'm dating someone you really like and you want to be married one day? My, I'm going to answer this one first. Um, you definitely need to pray. Even if you are not um, professing to be a Christian or if you're not professing to be living um, for God, you want to pray and you want to acknowledge God because okay. marriage is serious. Yeah, it is. Yeah. marriage is um it's a big step so I, and you need to really try to get yourself in the channel to hear from him um even in the church in the church out of the church no matter what if you're talking right. about saying right. i do um you need to make sure that you have prayed and acknowledged and seeked god and they need to do the same um and you need to do counseling Premarital yes. counseling in the church, out of the church. Right. All of those things are beneficial. You know, we say um, 
this is not marriage counseling. This is just our, these are our experiences. Yeah. That is not the goal of this. This is us being, so this is after the fact. Mm -hmm. But um, it's better to enter into it with, you know, godly counsel. Yeah. Because yeah, you are yeah. you are enter entering into a godly covenant. Mm -hmm. So you definitely want godly counsel. Um, you want to talk. And it's good to do. It's nothing wrong with premarital counseling outside. However, you want God to be the center of your marriage. That's the only other person that I will allow, that we will allow into our marital affairs Correct. is God. Nobody else no, is right. in this. This is between right. me and him. Um, and if I was going to go back to the lady of eight years, continue to keep, if you haven't, start. Make sure that your covenant is just between you and keep your husband. Out of your keep business. everybody yeah. else out of yeah. your business. Get the Period. Road. The third person out. Yes, that the third only third party is out. God. That's the yeah. only other person that needs to be in the marriage. Others. Because we can all say That's what it. we said tonight. But nobody knows what makes Shayla happy like Bernard and Bernard happy like Shayla. Nobody knows what makes me happy like my wonderful husband and vice versa. Nobody knows what makes Pastor Hall happy or First Lady Hall happy like those two do. And then all the way down to the Austins. So keep, keep everybody out of your business. Right. And keep God at the center. Amen. And now that is the basis. Mm -hmm. And it'll take you a like long that. way. A long, long way. way. And to that. piggy we up what, what Vicky said, yeah. you know, about keeping God in your in your marriage. You remember the movie by T.D. Jakes, Not Easily Broken. And yeah. because the, he told them to allow God to be that third strand cord, because it's not sure easily broken. But when they let God yeah. out of it, things start happening but as soon as they Tell kept apart. god in it that that cord they yeah. they got back together but what what we're saying about keeping god in your marriage and making sure he's that three strand cord if you if you braid a rope th with the three braids and you try to break it that's not easily broken or you try to cut through it, it you can't it's not easily cut through Versus if you have a one strand cord or a two strand cord that's not real tight, you can break that and you can cut through it. So God has to be the center of that relationship. Mm -hmm. Is God first, then mm -hmm. chocolate <laughs> drop because he's not chocolate. I'm I'm cocoa. <laughs> I'm 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 I'm, I'm caramelized. Then it's caramel. <laughs> then it's let me say and let me say this too. Yeah, you keep the third party out. When me and Pastor Hall first got married, he, one of his aunts sit us down and she told us, she said, you keep the third party. She said, it could be the children, the mama, the daddy, the sister, the brother, friend, keep all of them out of your marriage. Correct. And if you do that, you will go a long ways in your marriage. Amen. So, and that's one thing we have learned to keep that third party completely out of your out of your marriage and you know god will bless you and another thing too if you want to be married and this this person want to marry this individual sit down and get you a piece of paper write down i tell every young woman be pacific on what you want out of a man the baby Ooh. he will give you just a man okay Ooh. you sit down and write down what you want tell god what you want in this man you don't want just somebody that's going to treat you no any kind of way. You might get somebody, this individual, you might think he is the bum right. all the way from hell. But could not be. You know, so you have to really tell God exactly what you want and focus on the Lord and listen to what God is trying to tell you. Because God will show you. Because as they say, what you first see in an individual Okay, if they got a nasty attitude, if they like this, that is a third at the beginning, it's real. Believe it, it's real. It, it ain't gonna holler change. It's not gonna holler change right. unless the Lord changes. Right. So, oh, good. And another piece of, of advice as well. Oh, where are you going? 
I, I just want to say this, that I tell uh, uh, couples um, during the time while we're counseling, always remind them of the ring. It's more than two rings, but it's the third ring. Uh, my ring, her ring, and suffering. You're mm -hmm. going to have to endure. Mm -hmm. You cannot throw the towel in mm -hmm. the minute trouble comes. Mm -hmm. right. Prepare yourself for some suffering. You need to sit down with, mm -hmm. with your spouse and let them know mm -hmm. divorce is not the not answer. Right. We're going to stick and That's stay. Right. Yeah. That is so important. So mm -hmm. don't just think every day is going to be a great day. You're going to have some trouble. You're going to have some disagreement. Mm -hmm. But remember that third ring, suffering. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Also, um, make sure that even if you're not in a relationship now, make sure you take care of you. You know, mm. take yourself out. You know, even in your singleness, those who are single and are looking, make sure that you make yourself a priority. Get to discover who you are because, you know, when you get married, if you don't know who you are, you can't help anyone else. You know, you have to know who you are, what kind of person you are. You have to know your personality. You have to understand you so that when you take on and you take care of somebody else because you are self-affirmed already. Come on you will be able to take care of somebody else. Now, if you just discovering you are, and one of the things that, you know, is troubling when I hear people get together is that I'm getting together so someone else can complete me. No, you should be already whole. Correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't go into marriage trying to complete somebody else. Mm. You need to make sure that you are whole. That's right. You know, mm -hmm. you got to take care of yourself. Know who you are. So that when you get in that relationship, you know, you can start learning somebody else because it, it, it wastes time if you get into marriage and you don't know who you are. So you discovering yourself and you discovering someone else, which makes it a lot harder. So if you know who you are, take yourself on a date. I told her when I was single, I used to take myself to the movie. I don't need nobody to go with me. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take yeah. myself I, to dinner. I wasn't the only one. Right. No. You talk, she she talk about you me too. come on, man. Right. Right. You go to my club one o'clock in the morning, walk around. I listen, I will go and sit down at the dinner table in the I'm restaurant by myself. Man, I, I used to love nobody, for people. Don't need no. nobody to go with me. Nope. I used to you love for people to look at me yeah, and see please. me by myself. And enjoy yeah. myself. Yeah. But you know, to piggy off what um Vicky and and Mi and First Lady Hall said about making sure you pray before you get a person. <laughs> And I'm going to say this quick before I didn't know Bernard Hall. We went, he, we had classes together, but I never knew him. And my mother used to get physically and verbally abused majority of my life before she met her husband now. And I, I wasn't in, I wasn't in church. I went to a Baptist church. I went, but I wasn't in church. And I used to go to Church of God in Christ with my grandmother. And I used to always say, I ain't never getting to Church of God in Christ because I ain't wearing no skirt all the time. I just ain't doing that. But when that happened, the, the night that I thought I was going to lose my mother because he took two butcher knives up in the room and put mm. dressers behind the door and locked the door and we couldn't get the door open. And, you know, all that happened, my mom ended up surviving that. But when all that happened, I prayed and I said, Lord, I said, what? Well, I don't want no man like that. I said, when you send me somebody, I don't care what church they in, God, but I done already went, endured this half my life. And I don't want to marry somebody that's going to do that same thing. Lord, give me somebody that's going to treat me right and is going to be there for me and not abuse me physically or mentally. And lo and behold, this big old guy right here. Now, I didn't go looking for him. He found me. Same thing. I would say Same he didn't find the wife. Finally. Absolutely. He found me. I ain't go searching for him. Like Absolutely. I said, we was in the same class. I didn't know who he was. Never heard of Bernard Hall, never heard of the Hall brothers mm -hmm. singing, none of that. Mm -hmm. But when God, when I asked God for that, 
and mm-hmm. God sent him along, I knew I didn't write down like most like uh sister Trinae did. I didn't write down anything and, and do a list. I just specifically told God what I wanted. And I said, I didn't want anybody to abuse me, but I want somebody in church. And then when he said he was church of God in Christ, I said, oh, Lord, Jesus. <laughs> well, I guess I got to put on this skirt. Put on the skirt. <laughs> 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 Look. I do. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. First lady. Austin. I was just going to say that um, in addition to now, like, like my husband, um, I took myself out. I did stuff. I had fun. Um, I traveled. I did a lot of traveling. And I mean, I'm talking about I could be in New York one week in Chicago the next week and people are calling me asking me, what are you doing? Well, I'm out of town. Well, where are you? I'm in Chicago. Well, you were just in New York last week. That's how I was because I had the freedom to do that. And so in addition to knowing who you are, being comfortable in being single, being comfortable in your own skin, have a, have a goal for yourself. Because there are things that my husband, he loves to do on his own. And there are things that I love to do on my own. And it's not, it, it, it's, it's, they are, uh, they are, what are stress reliefs, stress relievers. And, and so I'm able to do some things on my, on my own. And he's able to create and do all kinds of things. So I would encourage you also to be comfortable mm-hmm. with you. Be comfortable mm-hmm. with how you present yourself. Be comfortable with how you love yourself. If you see yourself in the mirror, oh, I need my hair done. I need my, go do it. Go do it for you. Mm-hmm. Make yourself feel good. Love mm-hmm. on you. That's it. And then take yourself out on the date. And honey, mm-hmm. let me tell you something. If you're looking as good, if you're looking as good as you think you are, you're going to get somebody's attention. Amen. Now, send the person your way, but you don't have to go looking for them. No. They will find no. you. But while mm-hmm. they are finding yeah. you, Ruth was working. Ruth was being busy. And Boaz saw her. He didn't Come on see now. him. He mm-hmm. saw her first because she was busy tending to the assignments that her hands were to do. And we all have assignments. So whatever your assignment is at that particular time, in addition to prayer, in addition to seeking God's face, in addition to writing, the, writing those notes down, make sure you are prepared to be a wife. Make sure you are working and, and prepared for that because it's definitely more than a notion. We see all the cute, fancy, fluffy stuff, but it's more to it than that. Buy your own self a house. Yes. Okay. Buy yourself a house, buy yourself yeah. a car, take yeah. care of you because and let me, you're going to have to start sharing some stuff, praise God. Yeah. You're going to have to, <laughs> food, you're going to, have to start sharing your face and you, are, you might not necessarily like that. So, but, but be, be prepared and be comfortable with who you are, who God created you mm-hmm. to. And let me say this. I know I went to church one Sunday morning and mine went on meeting nobody, no man in my mind. Got to church. Guess who walks in the back of the church? So I was, I was up toward the front of the church. I felt somebody kept watching me, but I didn't know <laughs> who it could have been. But you know how you feel somebody watching you? Right. So I look back. Look, he was a devil then. I look back. <laughs> back, 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 back. He was wagging his head. Look, brother, Bob, the other hall know what I'm talking about. <laughs> he was looking. He was there. He was winking his eye at me. So I, you know, I said, "Who is that?" And she said, "Oh, that's Mother Hall's son." I said, "That man standing back there, winking his eye at me. What do he want with me?" She said, I don't, "I don't know." As soon as church was over, with, he was trying to talk to me. This other guy on the organ. He was trying to talk, talk to me. Thank God I ain't talked to him. And he turned out to be gay. Oh, <laughs> 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 he turned out to be flaky. <laughs> pastor told me to leave that alone, y'all. Thank God. He found Look, he's me. speaking as a pastor now. <laughs> he's pastor now. So the Lord hey. saved him and... Uh, and everything, and we were married, and you know, and everything just worked from that. But the Bible does say he didn't find a wife, find some, you know, that find a wife, find some good things. So I thank God for that. So I would tell anybody, yeah, like, like Sister First Lady Austin was saying, let him, let that individual find you, and you'll be more blessed, you know, because yeah. you're doing, you know, the will of the Lord when you do it like that. So, hey, mm-hmm. Vic, Vic I'm, I'm gonna say this real quick. Uh, <laughs> I have a daughter. I'm messing with him, y'all. I have a daughter. She's uh 
my daughter is about to be 25 years old. She's a registered traveling nurse. That is my baby. Let me tell you, I tell her every time I talk to her, the standards that you have and you've set, keep them. That's right. Don't lower them. I'm, I'm talking to the lady that's thinking about, you know, she wants to get married. Keep your standards. Don't right. lower your standards. If a man love you, listen, I'm giving y'all women some prop now because y'all got y'all. You God gave y'all something. Yeah, he gave y'all some. If a man really love and care about you, trust me, he going to come up to your bar. Keep that standard. Yeah. You ain't got to lower your bar for him. Nope. All right. Because he you didn't heard it over and over again he's got to find you so don't don't lower your standards keep your bar high if your bar high that's cool then that mean it guess what god know who you are he's got somebody out there for you if you it's lower right. your bar then the, you you might get all kind of trash i'm sorry right. but i'm just saying it like it is keep your bar where it's at uh uh uh, uh acknowledge god and who's for you you will get them. That's right. But don't lower your, don't lower. I, like I, I tell my daughter all the time, don't lower your standards. You know, you, Hey, you want somebody that's going to be compatible to you. You don't want to just accept no anything because yeah. you got to live with that. You know that's what? Right. Wait on God, keep your standards where they at and he'll find you. That's and right. You don't know it's him. Yes. You will know it's him. Stay hidden. Stay hidden. Stay hidden and don't let a man tell you, please, please, please. Don't ever fall for a man and say, I got close to God just to get close to you. Please don't do that. Yeah. Big red flag. Mm -hmm. He needs to have a relationship with the Lord for himself. If Correct. you stay hidden long enough, God will reveal you to him and he will be able to get to you. And look, she keep on rubbing my back over here, y'all. Now, we had... She talking about seven years. I don't think my standards was that low. <laughs> it wasn't that low, but I'm just, <laughs> that's just an example. Seriously, if a man specifically wants you and loves you, I tell people that it's not about the seven yeah, years. I was told several times to, to dump you and keep moving. They tried to hook me up with other folks. <laughs> but you got the prize, and he Look, trying to be listening. funny. I ain't listening. To <laughs> but seriously, I say go ahead, Pastor Hall. I, I want to say to you young ladies, keep your clothes on. Thank That's you. Right. Keep Amen. your clothes on. Right. You don't have to dress like a hoochie mama uh -oh. to attract a real man. Oh, that's right. A, a real man that's looking for a wife do not want one that's <clears throat> that's being a billboard to the world. That's, that's right. You keep Thank your you. clothes on. Oh. Um, right. I'm signing off. <laughs> <laughs> Drop the mic. Benediction. <laughs> all right, you all. This has been great. <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining. We will be back really soon. Thank you all for staying with us. We had a high retention rate, you all, tonight, especially for as for it as being as late as it is. I can't even talk. But thank you all for being here. Thank you to our panelists for being transparent, being honest, um, dropping major gems of wisdom, knowledge, all that good stuff, because it is much needed in these days and times. So we love you all and God loves you all. We're going to end our Facebook. Can you end the Facebook? Yep. Um, if you have questions, comments, concern, anything you'd like on us or like for us to speak on um, in our next session or episode, it'll be episode three. Um, we'll let you know when the date is. Send them to us or to somebody via Facebook Messenger, um, text, chat, whatever it is. And we promise you, we will get these questions. We'll keep it anonymous. We will not put anybody's name to anything. Um, and we'll just talk about it um, and see, get everybody's take. Because what works over here may not work over there. We've got a lot of different opinions and a lot of different minds here. Um, and we can get some different thoughts on things to try to help you out. A lot of people are going through a whole lot now. And we're almost done. Um, you know, we're in a time right now in this world where it's bad. And there's stuff happening everywhere you turn around. Um, it's rough. People are going through struggles. Um, it's hard. People are trying to figure out how they're going to put food on their table, how they're going to pay their light bill. And so, you know, 
hopefully we can talk about these things. You know, we've been in a struggle. It just is what it is. Life you know, life. life comes and life happens, but we made it through. And it's our hope to tell you how we made it through and how we got over. Um, we're not out of it. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. We ain't got it made in the shade. We ain't not got everything yet. we want. Yeah. Um, but we are, we're blessed and we're highly favored. So thank you once again for joining with us. Um, and we hope to see you all again soon to our panelists. We're going to end the live and we'll talk to you all for just a minute and then, um, we'll be done. So let me turn this off here.